Hello and welcome to Military Combat Network. In today's video, I'm going to react to the five most elite special forces in the world. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, hit the like button, it really does help. And if you want to follow my Instagram account down in the description. So, I'm going to react to this video. It's by a YouTube channel called The Finest, so I'm reacting to his video. I've watched this video already. Some people already asked me in the past to react to it and I never did. Um, and the reason is I watched it and I thought it's a load of bullshit. I, I really did. First of all, it's someone who made a video of the top five elite special forces in the world, his own biased opinion, yeah? I don't agree with none of it. The whole ranking system of the top five is completely wrong. Anyway, let's get into this video, guys. Special forces are military units that have been trained to carry out special, often secretive, and sometimes dangerous operations. Depending on the country, these missions can include everything from covert ops to counterterrorism. So who are the best of the best? From the Huntsman Corps to the British SAS, here are five of the most elite special forces in the world. Before we begin, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell for more amazing videos yeah, every amazing day. Videos. With that being said, let's begin. Huh? Hmm. Number five, Huntsman Corps. Oh right, it's a Huntsman Corps, not a corps. It's a corps. Danish Army Special Forces Unit from Alborg Air Base. If you want to be one of the best of the best, then this special forces unit is the one you'd want to be part of. It was first formed in 1785 as the Hunter Corps of Zealand, but underwent several name changes over the years. It became the Huntsman Corps in 1961 and has trained over 350 soldiers between 1961 and 2009. Even though it has been around for hundreds of years, it wasn't until 1995 that elite trained soldiers were deployed on their first mission. It was time to put their training and hard work to the test. A six-man team, Task Force K-Bar, was sent on a counter-sniper reconnaissance mission to Sarajevo and Bosnia. For their efforts as part of a joint special forces group in Afghanistan, the Huntsman Corps received the Presidential Unit Citation in 2004. If you think you've clocked up enough hours on your gaming console to fancy yourself a special forces expert, then think again. You would be amazed at what it takes to actually become involved in an elite special forces team, such as the Huntsman Corps. You must be both physically and mentally fit. The first stage covers five days of learning what you must get better at, such as swimming and orienteering. You then move on to training and evaluation, followed by an eight-week patrol course. If you manage to excel in this grueling training course, you then move on to the aspirant course, which is all about learning and pushing your physical limitations. Those who master the aspirant course will then complete two weeks of parachuting and two weeks of combat swimming. Today, the Huntsman Corps consists of 150 soldiers with experience in parachuting, infiltration, sabotage, counterterrorism, surveillance, demolitions, and more. They model much of their programs on those of the British SAS and often train with both them and US Navy SEALs. Number four. Right, let me pause this a minute. So, first of all, he's saying corps all the time when it's supposed to be core. Second of all, He's using wrong footage. He's using uh, footage from Switzerland and all different types of militaries across the world just to fill out this video, um, which pisses me off a little bit. But when I make videos, I ensure, well, 99% of the time, I make sure it is the correct footage of that nation, uh, which is a little bit disrespectful to them. Third of all, I don't place them in the top five. I really don't. Um, I think there's better special forces out there, which he's not naming these top five, but anyway, let's move on and see who's number four. The Indian, the Indian Marcos, Indian Marcos. also known special as Marine special Commandos, special Commandos or Marcos, is a special operations unit that works as part of a tri-series armed forces special operations division. Marcos has been around since the late 1980s and can undertake all manner of missions, be it on the sea, on the land, or in the sky. However, they specialize in maritime operations, Marcos has around 2,000 personnel, but accurate numbers are classified information. What you can know, however, is that training is so strict that pre-training applicant selection excludes up to 80% of applications and selected personnel within three days. Anyone considered for the Marcos has to come from the Indian Navy and must be in their early 20s. The two-year recruitment process incorporates airborne operations, counterterrorism, anti-piracy, anti-hijacking, combat diving, unconventional warfare training, 
and more. The first step to joining the Indian Marcos is three days of physical fitness testing and an aptitude test. After 80% of applications are screened out, the remaining 20% will go through what's referred to as Hell's Week, which is not dissimilar to what the US Navy SEALs do for their recruits. From sleep deprivation to physical exercise, Marcos leaves no stone unturned in ensuring they choose the best people for the job. Only around 2% of applicants will make it past this point. The entire training process can take around three years, with everything from weaponry to warfare, intelligence, anti-terrorism, commando skills, and skydiving covered in the program. The dropout rate is around 90%, and those who make it through to becoming part of this elite special forces unit will well and truly deserve to be there. After all, who would go through all that and not be capable of protecting their country? In 2017, they rescued an Indian bulk carrier ship from pirates in the Gulf of Aden. Marcos has also been known to fight alongside the Indian Army, such as during the 1999 Cargill War. Number 3. J.W. Grom J.W. Grom which is named in honor of the Home Army and Silent Unseen from World War II, is a premier special forces unit from Poland. Such is their accuracy, precision, and skill set that soldiers within JW Grom are often referred to as the surgeons. They boast surgical abilities, extensive medical training, and are even modeled on NATO Tier 1 units such as Delta Force from the United States. It won't take you long to realize why JW Grom appears on the list of the five most elite special forces in the world. They are a group of highly trained soldiers who are ready for almost anything. They were established in 1990 and have been deployed in anti-terrorist operations, unconventional warfare, special services, and enemy line force. In 2002, a 40-man team from JW Grom was deployed for Afghanistan for the 2003 invasion of Iraq. While they were integral to this operation, they weren't on their own. JW Grom formed part of the Naval Special Operations Task Group, which included U.S. Navy SEALs, U.S. PSYOPs, civil affairs teams, and the British Royal Marines. During this operation, Grom was tasked with assaulting the KAOT oil terminals. During this operation, there were no casualties, and explosives that were found were taken care of by Grom. A Grom sniper has also been involved in a close target reconnaissance operation with DET-1, while U.S. Navy SEAL Chris Kyle was assigned to J.W. Grom for one week in Baghdad as well. The training process to join this elite special forces unit is rigorous, and those soldiers who go through it do so with the best groups in the world. Psychological, physical, and durability tests all make up part of the initial testing stage to filter out those who don't make the cut. Those who do can move on to disciplines such as sniping, parachuting, anti-terrorism, and other special operations. Around 75% of those in Grom are trained paramedics or medics, and all soldiers also trained to capture and kill. Number 2. British SAS It's of no wonder to anyone why the right, British okay. Special Air Service appears on the list of the right. most... <clears throat> Number 2 and always put SAS, British Forces. So he's put them at number 2. He hasn't put SBS in these top 5, which is Special Boat Service. He hasn't put the Germans in, Kai's car, yeah? Um, Spezialkräfte. He hasn't placed... Who else has in he place? Spetsnaz, which are like some of the, probably the top three elite special forces in the world by fact. Yeah, he hasn't placed them in there. And we're all gonna, you don't even have to guess. You know, you can just say it out loud uh, who he's placed at number one, which is completely biased, obviously, because he's American and made that video. Um, anyway, let's watch the rest of this SAS number two and uh, see what it speaks of. Elite forces in the world. Most of the special forces units around the world base their military model on that of the SAS. He's just said it. Most of the special forces across the world, yeah, take their training from the SAS. That's a fact. Yeah, the SAS are the probably the, you know, again, this is my bias thing, probably the most elite special forces in the world. Yeah. Other special forces come and train with the SAS to take things away. But then again, all special forces learn from each other and they all do pretty much the same thing. And even the US Delta Force unit founder spent time with the unit. The British SAS was founded in 1941 and became a corpse in 1950. Oh Their primary focus is on it's reconnaissance, counter-terrorism, hostage it's rescue, it's not and corpse. direct action. Yeah. Due to the he, sensitivity he of what call. they do, this special forces unit is highly know, classified. Really there strange. is limited information on what they actually do. What we can tell you, however, is that the SAS is made up of a regular, 
and two reserve units with around 400 to 600 soldiers. There are four squadrons with 65 men in each, a major, and four troops commanded by captains. Each troop has typically around 16 men, with these separated into patrols of four men. In each patrol, each of the four men has a specialized skill. They might be a medic, in charge of demolition, or something else equally as important and essential for special operations. The British SAS never recruit from the general public, and the training program is intense. The only way to get into this Special Forces unit is by applying from the UK Armed Forces. Most candidates often have an airborne or commando background. During the twice yearly selections, 200 candidates undergo a fitness test, with cross country running against the clock, a 40 mile march, a 20 hour scale, and ascending of the tallest peak in South Wales, Penivan. Candidates must. Right, uh, it's, uh, it's actually Penivan. That's what it's called. It's in Wales. Also take part in combat survival exercises battle plans, foreign weapons, a four mile run in 30 minutes, a two mile swim in under 90 minutes, and jungle phases in one of three areas. Finally, they must undertake a week long escape and evasion exercise. During this exercise, the candidates form patrols and spend the next 36 hours in grueling conditions. Out of the 200 candidates who start, only around 20% will manage to scale and descend Bani Fan in the required time frame. After the escape and evasion exercise, about 30 men will remain those who make it through will be able to transfer to an operational squadron. For as long as the British SAS has been in existence, only men have been able to join. However, 2018 marked recruitment policy change and the first woman, a mother, applied for the six-month selection course in May 2019. While she remains anonymous, she is thought to be experienced in covert operations in Afghanistan and had worked alongside the SAS before. The British SAS is a highly elite special force that has gained respect and honor around the world. Due to not only their engagement, they have been awarded several battle honors dating back to 1944. Number one, Navy SEALs. At number one is the right. United States. No surprise, he's placed as number one Navy SEALs, leaving out, like I already mentioned, the German Spezialkräfte, um, SPS from Britain, which is just as good as the SAS. Um, Spetsnaz, he left them out, and numerous other organizations across the world which are pretty much on par and hard to place in the top five, he's left out. So, in my opinion, this whole video is biased. You know, um, he's saying wrong things, he's putting the wrong footage in these videos. Um, one thing I will say, most of the stuff he's saying about these um, different militaries, special forces, is correct you know i.e what he's just talked about the sas is correct so he's got all his information right however you know you guys let me know who you think is top five your personal preference top five special forces in the world let's have a look at the differences whereas me personally i put sas at the top number one navy seals second sbs third fourth german spezialkräfte and then the fifth would be between Spetsnaz and probably New Zealand Special Forces, but it's hard to place a top five. Navy SEALs. At number one is the United States Navy Sea, Air and Land SEAL teams. The Navy SEALs is the United States Navy's primary special operations force and part of the Naval Special Warfare Command. John F. Kennedy created the SEALs in 1962 and they are often noted as being the cream of the crop. The SEALs carry out special operations in all manner of terrains, including the water, jungles, Arctic, mountains, deserts, and your everyday urban environment. There is almost nothing this elite special force can't do. What's more, such as their experience and elite skill set, that the CIA recruit their operators from the SEALs. Some of their more unique tasks even include eliminating high-level targets, gathering intelligence, and forming joint operations. Since the 1960s, they have been involved in the Korean War, Grenada, the Iran-Iraq War, the Persian Gulf War, Panama, the war in Afghanistan, and Operation Enduring Freedom in the Philippines and Horn of Africa. Those who think their gaming skills put them in good steed for the Navy SEALs will be terribly mistaken. Before SEAL training can commence, a candidate must pass medical and physical screening, which can be quite challenging in itself. It includes things like swimming 500 yards in 12 and a half minutes, 50 sit-ups in two minutes, and a 1.5 mile run in 10 and a half minutes. Those who pass these tests can begin the rigorous Navy SEALs training regime, 
the attrition rate sits at approximately 80%, and formal training can take around 12 months, with warfare prep, parachuting, and more. While the SEAL Special Forces team was a male-only unit, that changed in 2015. It was decided that if a woman could pass the grueling basic training, they should be allowed to serve. However, in 2017, a woman who tried to become the first female Navy SEAL quit within one week of initial training. That goes to show just how grueling becoming part of an... Um, I'm not going to talk too much about it. Obviously, I've said the main points already, what I wanted to say. It, it kind of bugged me, this video. I don't know why it just bugged me. Um, I thought it was very biased in what he's, uh, you know, the way he placed the special forces, i.e. putting the Navy SEALs at number one, even though they've only been formed in the 60s, where the, um, the British SAS has been around since 1941. So we've got 20 years more experience for starters. And um, the Navy SEALs took loads and loads of training away from the SAS. So obviously, you know, he's done his homework in regards, you know, what it takes to become a special forces within the Navy SEALs or, you know, the Polish Grom, etc. He's done his homework, you know, I'm not gonna fault him for that. However, like I said many times now, it's very biased this video. Please leave a comment uh, in the comment section. To tell me your thoughts about this video. Um, did it bug you that he kept saying corpse instead of car? Uh, which really pissed me off. <laughs> I don't know why. It just bugged me. But anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this little reaction video, you know, I didn't talk too much this time. Um, hit the subscribe button. Uh, hit the like button as well if you liked it. And then also, as I already said, in the link down in the description, there's going to be my Instagram. If you want to follow me on there, follow me on there. And I'll see you in the next video, guys. Take care.